Hi, I'm Anil Chavla. I'm the founder and CEO of Archive Social. In this video, we'll examine the application of public records law to government social media. We'll view and discuss real-life examples of government social media communications and how these communications can, in fact, constitute long-term records. And finally, we'll review real legal case studies and precedents to better understand the urgency and importance of being proactive on the issue of social media record keeping. So let's briefly examine public records laws. Public records laws, such as the Freedom of Information Act at the federal level, were established several decades ago. So how do these old laws now apply to social media? Well, it's the exact same reason that government has long interpreted these laws to apply to communication such as email. These public records laws were written in a very future-proof fashion to account for the fact that the way we communicate and the technology we use will evolve over time. In fact, most public records laws include the phrase, regardless of physical form, to ensure that government communication, whether it's sent or received, is treated as a long-term government record, regardless of how it was transmitted. In other words, a citizen complaint is a citizen complaint, regardless of whether it's sent in a letter, an email, or a tweet. The reality is that most governments have already confirmed the classification of social media as a public record. NARA, who is responsible for guiding federal agencies when it comes to record keeping, has issued social media guidance for the past several years explaining how agencies can manage social media as a public record. In states such as Texas, Florida, Washington, North Carolina, Ohio, Oklahoma, Colorado, California, and others have also issued updated policies or guidance indicating how agencies and governments can retain social media as a public record. In fact, in September 2013, the state of Texas updated the Texas Public Information Act to explicitly declare social media as public record by including internet posting as an example of media that can contain public information. So what this means, at least according to legal definition, is that social media is public record. In most jurisdictions, agencies are responsible for their own record keeping and must retain not only what they post on social media, but also what they receive in the form of replies and comments from citizens. And finally, your existing record retention schedules do apply to social media based on the nature of the content. So we've seen how social media can theoretically constitute public record, but what about in reality? Let's take a look at a few examples. In the past few years, we've seen how social media can provide critical infrastructure during times of crisis, enabling agencies to rapidly inform the public and ensure citizen safety. In fact, during the Boston bombings, the very first announcement that the suspect had been caught was transmitted as a tweet. So it's easy to see how these types of communications can be important for long-term record keeping. And day to day, we've seen law enforcement around the country utilize social networking to share wanted suspect information and solicit crime tips from the community. There are instances in which citizens have actually provided information via social media. We've also seen how cities and counties have integrated social media into their 311 help centers to better serve citizens and address issues such as potholes and broken traffic lights. And by looking at these sites, there are countless examples of how social media communications can contain important information as it relates to government business. So here's just one example of how a government agency can receive helpful feedback via Twitter. In this circumstance, a citizen was trying to call the Texas Department of Transportation and was unable to get through. She ultimately determined that the phone number printed on top of a mailing was actually incorrect, and she was able to inform the Texas DOT via their Twitter account. And finally, here's a really eye-opening example of how a citizen made a public records request for social media content that was being pushed out by the Seattle PD, and they made this public records request for social media by using social media and sending them a tweet. So now we've seen how social media fits under the definition of public records, and we've also seen real-life examples of government social media communications that bear long-term value. But why is it urgently important for government agencies to take action and start archiving their social media today? Well, let's wrap up by reviewing two legal case studies that demonstrate the potential risk and consequences of failing to maintain records of social media. The first case study actually centers around email, given the amount of case law that already exists for email records, as well as for the fact that email provides a perfect analogy for why government should archive their social media. This case study also highlights the importance of metadata 
and the need to maintain complete authentic records of your electronic communications. In 2006, the City of Shoreline, Washington received a public records request for an email. The City responded by providing a copy of the email and then deleted the original. Unfortunately, the citizen then requested the original email, including all of its original metadata, which refers to the technical information that's embedded inside the email and describes how the email originated and how it had been transmitted across various computer servers. Since the email had been deleted, the city could no longer fulfill this request. The case eventually spanned nearly seven years, and the city was fined $100,000 for failing to produce the metadata. The city was also ordered to pay more than $400,000 in legal expenses for the plaintiff. Along the way, the Washington Supreme Court established a legal precedent indicating that metadata is in fact a part of the public record. This case clearly highlights the need to invest in proper records management systems and practices up front. It's also extremely relevant when thinking about how you might archive your social media. For example, we all know that a tweet contains at most 140 characters. But underneath the tweet, there are more than 2,000 characters of metadata, information such as user IDs, timestamps, and location information. And as we've learned from the City of Shoreline case, this metadata could prove to be invaluable during a legal situation. Finally, our second case study focuses directly on government social media. In 2012, the City of Honolulu was presented a lawsuit for deleting content off of their police department's Facebook page. A gun advocacy group had been posting pro-gun comments and posts on the police department's Facebook page, and the police department decided to moderate these comments. What's really interesting about this case is that it has nothing at all to do with public records. Rather, the plaintiff is claiming that their First Amendment freedom of speech rights had been violated by the posts being deleted. Now, this case still has to be sorted out by the courts, but the key takeaway here is that social media can find its way to court just like anything else. And in particular, we really have to hope that Honolulu kept records of the social media content they deleted so that they are able to present that evidence and properly tell their side of the story in the courtroom. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. If you're interested in learning how you might easily solve these challenges, please feel free to contact us or visit our website at archivesocial.com.